That will be done. All right, I'll fill up that one. This chair here. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, that's all. Okay. Nice. Thank you, Joe. Be black. Are we ready? All right, yeah, we're ready to start the, we're going to start the countdown. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm going to have Joel pointing you. Good morning. Are we on? Yeah. Oh, good morning. Good morning. Welcome to church. I am Jesse Lee Peterson. Thank you all for being with me. I know that it's holiday season, people traveling, and I understand it. But thank you for tuning in. I want to hear from you, whatever your questions, comments are. And good morning, everybody here again. Good morning. Good morning. How y'all? Good. Fantastic. Good, man. I, uh, so we are here to fellowship, right? Not to be preached at. So um, I have an update about the building fund. I'll give it to you in a minute. I do want to tell you that, um, can you have Doug to come down? Yes. Yesterday I was at the post office and I have this loaner car. My insurance company let me drive while my car is at the doctor. Um, and so it, I, went, I parked the car, went into the post office. I came back out. I couldn't find a car. Because there were so many cars there, they all looked just alike. The Mercedes looked like the BMW, and the BMW looked like the Mazda, the Mazda looked like the, the Volkswagen, the Volkswagen. Why did they make all the cars to look alike? Have you noticed that? They all look alike. That's not normal. And I was thinking, so I had to do that little beep thing to make the car go off. And I'm like, wow, imagine if the world looked alike, everybody looked just alike. It'll be messed up. But why did they, Cheryl, why did they make all the cars to look just like, all the cars are white and gray, and they look just like each other? It must be that they sell well or something. They all just kind of. Have you noticed that? Kind of, yeah. And then I noticed that they don't make any noise. You know, a manly car, you turn it on and go boom, boom, boom. You know, you. The neighborhood can hear you. And when you're going down the road, the neighbors hear you coming, right? Your girl hear you coming. But now the cars are so quiet. You don't even know if it's on or not. <laughs> These girl cars. And then they have it so easy where if you want to open the door, you just press a button. I want to open my door. <laughs> and when I get in, I want to slam it. You know what I'm saying? But you open the door to, and then you open the door to close it. What a mess. And then they got it now where you don't even have to touch the door to open it. You put your foot under the car, and the doors are open. I'm like, what the? So this is a perfect time for a man to create a manly car. You clean up. Would you like make buku money if you created a manly car? Make it rough. No? Inventors. Yeah, we need an inventor. So if you want to make some money, invent a car, a manly car. And make it a different color other than white or green <laughs> or black. What a sad world. <laughs> Welcome back. Thank you. And so, right here, Joe. You look totally different, really. When she first started here, she looked like one of those uh, people. <laughs> what, what's the name of the people? A liberal? No, a dark people. A what? Goth, yeah. Oh, okay. Remember yeah, that? no, I was, um, 
I was about 40 pounds overweight. Yeah. I'd shaved, shaved my eyebrows. Actually, I had them lasered off because I thought that was a good idea for some, yeah. some reason. Yeah. And, and now you look totally different. You look like a young lady now. I look like a, a proper woman. Yeah. Lost weight and everything. And you've been traveling. Yeah, yeah. How, where, where did you go? Oh, my goodness. Uh, well, so first we started in America. And that was like the best place to start. Yeah. I was so so proud of my country and uh, going through Colorado, Utah, Nebraska, um, Nevada. It was incredible. And then from there, um, Dublin, Greece, UK. I spent six weeks in Thailand, mainly by myself. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. What brought you back home? And maybe we could talk about that after. Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. But no, I mean, I this whole... I thought that 21 was my best year. Yeah. You, know, you always want to think like when you're younger, it's better. Yeah. And I realized in the last five months, I've done so much more right than on. I've done in like the span of years. So. It's amazing how you can change once you overcome that anger. Yeah. And also, once I forgave my mom and you said that you'll never feel fear again. Right. I realized that, I mean, I'm, it's, a, it's a struggle. There's so many things to overcome. But... I can catch myself now pretending that I'm fearful of certain situations. Yes. Yeah. Amazing. And so is this a struggle to overcome some things right now? Yeah, the, um, that voice in the back of your head telling you that you're no good, that right. you're ugly, that you're, you're not good enough for somebody else. And uh, yeah. You still believe it? I, I've actually, this last week, I've really been putting some, you know, uh, making time for the silent prayer and yes. then realizing, you know, it's like, oh, it's not so bad. You know, like I'm, I'm doing okay. I'm not judging myself right on. for getting over these things. Yeah, I'm going to tell you, don't struggle with anything. Yeah. It's enough to see it and it will change. But it, it is once you forgive and start, you know, yeah. uh, putting forth the effort to get out of the fallen state, a lot of darkness does, it just comes up. Yes. And I think that it just needs to come out. And just watch it. Yeah. Don't judge it. Don't, don't ask good or bad. Just watch it. It's so amazing what's going to happen. Yeah, absolutely. And what is happening. Yeah, and, I, and also staying away from mom oh, as good. well. Yeah. Stay away from mama. Yeah. Throw mama from the train. I've tried. <laughs> a mama's love is so special. It'll kill you. <laughs> that song, it stays with you until the day you die. That's true. But I'm proud of you. You look Thank amazing. Thank you. Thank you. You really do. Any questions about anything? Oh, goodness. Uh, I'm sure at some point, you know, I'm just, I came back just a few days ago, so I'm settling back into being an you L.A. So girl. You classy so, yeah. now. And you look like one of those people. Now you look normal. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome home. I'm glad to see you. It's wonderful to be back. I, I always thought I hated California. Yeah. And really, it has nothing to do with the place itself. It was just the trauma tied to my mother. Yes. And now I can kind of just see California as California and feel really lucky to be back in L.A. Right on. Yeah. Thank you for the blackface. Mm -hmm. Where did you get it from? In Thailand. Thailand. Yeah, I was at an elephant fair. And oh. I, just, I saw a bunch of masks, and that one just... Well, that's a nice place to get a black face. Well, considering that people fair. here are freaking out about uh, a black uh, yeah. jack-o'-lantern, right? It's like I would love to see that mask sold at I don't know, a Walmart or something. Right. It's never going to happen. <laughs> Isn't that a shame? It's possible. We can try. It's never going to happen. We can try. Yeah. You're right, but we'll get shut down. Walmart is too free. <laughs> um, anybody have any questions? Well, welcome back. I'm glad you're home. Anybody have any questions about anything? Comment. Yes, sir. Yeah, I just have kind of like an interesting question that I wanted to get your take on. Yeah. My whole <laughs> life, I've basically been a vegetarian. And no one in my family is like that. Eat some meat, man. <laughs> from, what, from what I've been told, like, no one else in my family is a vegetarian. From what I've been told, no one else in my family is a vegetarian. I guess when I was a baby and they would try to feed me like little baby food that had some like meat bits in it, right. I'd just spit out the meat automatically. Beta baby. And growing up, I just never <laughs> really liked it. Like sometimes I'd have like pepperoni if it was on pizza or like some McDonald's chicken nuggets maybe, but uh, 
Like, I've never had a hot dog or a hamburger or anything like that. Really? And I, don't, I don't really have any desire to. Yeah. Like, this past Thanksgiving, I took a little piece of turkey while no one was looking just so it wouldn't be like a spectacle. <laughs> had a little taste of it, and I didn't really like it. I mean, I ate it, but I wasn't that into it. And I was just, like, thinking, is this just like a little mental block I have? Because it seems like naturally, like, as humans, you should be able to eat meat and all that. Um, I don't know. I just never liked it. That's like a good that. question. Mark wanted had his hand. He wanted to respond to you first. Mark, you eat meat, right? I eat fish. That's all. Yeah. Beta, baby. Beta. <laughs> but it um, it says in the Bible to uh, for the person who doesn't eat meat to not judge a meat eater, and for the meat eater to not judge a person that abstains from meat. Yeah. No, I was going to tell you, you're doing just fine, man. Yeah. I wouldn't force myself to eat it. Uh, from what I hear, it's best to just eat vegetables and stuff because it seems to pass through you easier and stuff like that. So you're doing just fine. Yeah. So don't be tasting it because once you start tasting it, you will become a meat eater. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you're not going to like it. So you're doing just fine. All right. You're not falling out and fainting while you're running and all that, right? No. Yeah, no, no, you're I'm doing pretty healthy, yeah. Yeah. No, I, would, I wouldn't do it. All right. Any other question? Yes. I just wanted to say that I'm looking forward to the Women's Forum uh, Thursday. Oh, you and are? I'm hoping that more people will show up. <laughs> I wish you well. <laughs> no. This Thursday? I think it's this Thursday. Is it this Thursday? Yeah. The sixth, yeah. This is the third Thursday this week? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, we'll be here. Okay. Tell the ladies to come. Yes, I'd like for everybody, all the women that yeah. are close by to, to come. And you coming, Cheryl? Yes. Oh, okay. You coming? I am, yeah. yeah. Grace? Yeah. Uh, you'll be here. Yeah, you'll be here. I'll be in Maui. Ooh. <laughs> Don't brag. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing in Maui? It's my mom's 60th birthday, and my whole family is going, and Mark and I are going. <coughs> Amazing. Just for a trip. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll have fun without you. I'll be there next time. Right on. Any other questions? No? Okay. Is this your first time here? Yes, sir. How did you find out? Hold on a minute here. How did, what's your first name? My name is Juan. Juan? Juan, the cool skull. That's uh -oh. what they call me. How did you find out about us? Uh, I've been a very big fan of yours for a number of years now. Amazing. And, uh, and I've, uh, I'm a yeah. musician, artist, Ray born and raised here in Los Angeles, and I've always been with uh, really conservative Christian values since even when I was younger. Right even on. though I'm kind of a crazy weirdo musician, and I would be advertised as like a conservative Republican that got naked on stage and would have mosh pits and stuff. You did? And around the time when, when Trump was... Uh, elected, I got kind of blacklisted from a lot of the music scene. Uh, so, I, but I stayed you around. Naked. Huh? You got naked on stage? Yeah, I would get naked in mosh pits and punch people and be violent. You smoke pot? Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, no I do now, now, but I was actually oh, I sober smoker. then. I was sober then, and uh, I became and I became a pot smoker once I stopped touring as much. Oh, I see. And I'm trying to like wean myself off of it, but it's uh, been kind of like a a lot of work just working on my career right now but right. I'm an animator and I have a small uh, uh, production company now. so if you stop smoking pot are you going to get naked again <laughs> probably depending on my tour well, you know, stay with on the pot there man <laughs> <laughs> you're safer with the pot <laughs> well I'm glad you're here yeah thank you very much all right I so appreciate you. you're welcome man my biblical question um, which is the best way to deal with all people, with compassion or dispassion? Y'all understand that? Isn't that an interesting question? So I want to ask my uh, computer guy, because my, I asked him the other day, and his answer was so interesting, I wanted the world to hear it. I'm like, make sure I ask you on Sunday. So which is the best way to deal with all people, with compassion or dispassion? Compassion. Compassion? That's not what you said the other day. No, I just changed it. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, why are you changing it? 
You know, I must have been in my head because, like, like I said the other day. See, I told you it was a crazy. I episode. thought that you were saying, uh, not compassion, but passion. Should you deal with people with passion or with dispassion? That's what I thought you were saying, but you weren't saying that, evidently. No. So, I don't know why I thought that, but in my head, I I heard that. So now you say compassion, yeah. and why do you say compassion? Because at least with compassion, you have. Not that you feel for that person, but you, you are doing what's right with, with compassion. Compassion is what, you, what is right. Oh, OK. The correct way to deal with people. So do you stand by your answer? Today I do. Oh, I'm glad you let that other one go. I wish you guys could have. It's so embarrassing I can't repeat it. <laughs> Esteban, what do you say? I guess compassion. And why do you say compassion? Um, I guess I just feel like people do a lot of um, crazy stuff. You know, people are, they, they, um, when I deal with people at work, you know, I'm surprised at some of the things that they do. So uh, I just feel like I need compassion, you know, and kind of be patient with them and, and not judge them and stuff like that. Amazing. Do you, are you a compassionate person? Not necessarily. But. I didn't think so. I can think of many words to call you. Compassion is not one. No, but when it comes to, you know. When... <laughs> you won't even give Joy a ride in the rain. <laughs> if it was raining, yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, when it comes to, like, dealing with, like, difficult people and difficult situations, uh, you know, it's like I become really patient, and I have to, or else... I'll get like sucked into it and then get into my head. So you deal with people with compassion or no? Yeah. And so if you, and, but you're not a compassionate person. No. Where do you get it from? Um, you're like, oh Lord, I need a little compassion right now. I kind of just get out of my head because I try to like, whenever, let's say someone's screaming at me and it can be easy to like get mad and overtaken by it, so I kind of just like let go of everything and then kind of look at it from like out of my body. I don't know how to explain it. It's like um, I don't. Know, it just happens. It's like I become patient and and don't get mad. I don't know. Amazing. Yeah. Let me ask Hermes. Hermes. Yes. Uh, which is the best way to deal with people at all time, compassion or dispassion? Uh, I would say dispassion, but I don't think dispassion guessing? is the opposite of compassion. But why would you say dispassion, but you don't think dispassion? Because I think it's um, best to deal with people without being emotionally attached to a situation. The example I would give is like if my son is dealing with a situation, I know that if I'm emotionally attached to it, I can't really help him to see his way out of it. Yeah. But if I'm more detached, um, then I can step back and kind of. So which is the best way to deal with all people at all times? Dispassion. Why do you say that? Are you a dispassionate person or compassion? Um, I'm somewhere in the middle. There is no middle. Well, that's where I'm at. <laughs> <laughs> You're either compassion or not. Okay, I mean, I'm, the, I'm the only one there, but I'm in the middle. But that's where Satan lives. Whatever. <laughs> so which one? Dispassion. Are you guessing at it? No, I'm not. I'm telling you that's the best way. But how do I'm you not know saying that's I do it all the time. If you're, you, if you're not a dispassionate person, how do you know that's I the best way? I can be at times. So you go both ways? Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Don't tell nobody else. Not in that way. <laughs> so what? Not in that way. But you go, sometimes you're compassionate and sometimes you're dispassionate? Yes. So you can ride two horses at the same time? I don't know about all that, but I'm just saying that I, you know, there's times where I'm compassionate or I'm emotionally vested or involved with the situation. Right. And other times I'm more aloof. How do you know when, to be, when you want to be this way and that way and you switch? I think it just depends where I'm at, where I'm at, like... In the moment, in the, at that time. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I have to ask James, and I'm going to ask Joya last. I'm asking my employees first so I can see who I can fire during the holidays. 
So we try to raise money for a building, right? So we need to save. And so I'm trying to get rid of some of them. Daniel, what do you say? I might get in trouble, but I feel like it's a trick question. I think that <laughs> compassion is dispassion. You think compassion is dispassion. <laughs> Why do you think that? Because, like... I know that in the past you've said it's good to be dispassionate. Right. And then I know that the Bible and Christianity, and even you have said it's good to be compassionate. Right. But you, don't, you say that compassionate is not being, feeling sorry for people and stuff like that. So what do you say? That it's good to be both. So you are compassionate and dispassionate? I thing? didn't say I'm that. <laughs> oh. I'm passionate. Oh, you a passionate person? Mm -hmm. But you know. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, so, and why are you, if that's the right way to go? Being passionate? Yeah. Uh-uh. Uh, no. How do you know it's not the right thing? To be compassionate. Oh, to be compassionate? Yeah. I think that is the right thing to do. Uh, I'm saying passion is not the right thing to do. But compassion is? Yeah. Oh, okay. This is I so liked interesting. You how, what? how Esteban described it, where he sees that, that people are really passionate, and he just um, understands what what they're going through a little bit and doesn't judge them or anything. And he become compassion. You <laughs> well, like that? I think he has a little bit of compassion now. Esteban does? I mean, a little bit. He's Esteban, getting Esteban, we're talking about Esteban. <laughs> All right, no, but, but he's improving. <laughs> he's improving? We're talking about Esteban. Yeah. No? <laughs> Let me ask Nick, and then I got to move real fast. Nick, which is the best way to, and Nick is a producer, you guys know Nick. Which is the best way to deal with all people at all time, with compassion or dispassion? Uh, that was my answer on Monday. It was like kind of both. Both? So just saying, that was for the record. That was my answer on Monday. I'm sorry? That was my answer on Monday for the record. What that was kind of like both. Both? Yeah, like Com compassionate. compassionate. I chose compassionate first. Right. But I was, I was, I was saying the same thing of like, oh, I was like reserving, because um, I feel like you could be compassionate without feeling like feeling all that stuff that makes you act incorrectly with someone. And so sometimes you're compassionate, sometimes <laughs> you're dispassionate. Uh, yeah, sh sure. So you go both ways. Too? In a sense, not really. <laughs> what? Like I'm passionate. Right. But. That's a bad thing, but I feel like you can be compassionate without being passionate. But I'm asking about compassion. I know, <laughs> but it's the language. <laughs> I need a, a joint. <laughs> Relax, it's just fellowship. We're helping one another. Okay, that's your answer? Yeah. So you say compassion? Yeah. All right, right here, and then here. Oh, and Mark, I saw your hand. Here? Yeah. This your first time here? No, second time. Oh, yeah. so you can turn the mic on? Second time. Which is the best way to deal with people at all times? Uh -huh. With compassion or dispassion? Uh, I'm not sure. At first, I thought it was a trick question also. I thought it was uh, <laughs> Why being, th being uh, dispassionate was uh, dealing things with compassion. Uh, because you, just from looking at myself, whenever I'm emotional, it seems like things don't go right. For some reason, I uh, correlate passion with emotions and so whenever i use emotions like things get tricky right. yeah and then it's like i guess it leads to like temptations like oh you know let's get this result so that you know somehow benefits you i don't know that's how i kind of see it so i feel like this passion is dealing things with compassion because you're trying to i guess just let revelation happen like yeah i don't know what to do but you know Let's find out. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So you say dispassion? Dispassion. Are you a compassionate person or a dispassionate person? Uh, I think I try to act dispassionate, but inside it's passionate. Oh, okay. Yeah. What is it like to be a passionate man? Beta. <laughs> Beta. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Uh, you had your hammer? Okay. Dispassion. And why do you say that? Because no man is good. We don't have compassion to give. We don't have this compassion here, like, should I give it or should I not? It's uh, not ours to give. We're so just are you vessels. a compassionate person or a dispassionate? Dispassionate. You're a dispassionate person? Yes. Is that right? Why are you married? 
<laughs> you're doing this. Why are you married to a dispassionate man? Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> well, it's just like, I get stuck on the term compassionate now because it's like this modern shame word that's based around feelings. That's kind of how I feel about compassion. Like if you're a compassionate person, you like know how to respond to people who are suffering and like it's about how you make them feel. Yeah. And I just hear a lot of like modern women use this term now and empathy. You know, it's like all about being compassionate and right. empathetic, but it's based around feelings. And so for me, if you're compassionate, um, like how it's used now, it's not good. If you're compassionate as in you're calm and you can understand what the person's going through and you can help them to see like it more from a um, objective perspective so that they're not like freaking out about it anymore, then that's like a good compassionate. Um, but I think now that's more related with dispassion because you're calm and you can help the person kind of see more clearly what's going on. Are you a dispassionate person or compassion? I don't know. <laughs> you don't know? I think I'm kind of dispassionate. Why? Um, Did you know I mean, Mark was dispassionate before you married him? I mean, I didn't really think about it. Oh, uh, you're like, what the? <laughs> <laughs> Is he dispassionate? Um... I don't really know like what these words mean. <laughs> what, what is dispassionate? What do you feel like being dispassionate, Mark? You don't impose your will. You don't think about like what makes you angry and or like what makes you emotional or how you want to save the day or how you want to be right. You don't let these things guide things. You just calm and dispassionate and know so that. So you don't have any feelings at all? I mean, sure, they come. I ignore them. I know, that. I know, I know it's uh, correct to be dispassionate when there's a situation happening, maybe people are raising their voice, maybe something's happening. Yeah, Satan's going to come and scream his speakers at me, but I'm going to ignore them. So are you dispassionate with your wife too? Yes. Really? I'm sorry. <laughs> you can get an annulment right now. It hasn't been six months yet. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Right here. Are you compassionate or dispassionate? I'm dispassionate. You're dispassionate? Right now. Uh, and and what, is, what is that like? To be dispassionate? Yeah. To be uh, clear and um, awake. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. To be clear and awake. So you don't have any emotions for anyone? I can't say I don't have any emotions. Emotions do come, um, but, you know, um, I think that when I'm dispassionate and clear, I open myself up to be pa uh, compassionate. When you're dispassionate When I'm dispassionate, I open myself up to be compassionate towards And how someone. do you do that? It's not a doing, it's just a natural occurrence from being dispassionate. So you could be dispassionate and compassionate? Yes, well, it, compassion is the act of. It isn't a constant state. So if you, see someone suffering and you know you're, you're you're looking at that person dispassionately somehow an emergence of compassion arises i can't say that i asking myself to do it or anything like that and so, so if you see a situation you're dispassionate until you can see a certain situation then you feel like compassion comes up well it's again, it's not a doing. I just, you know, I, I, I agree with what you say, uh, with your, uh, what you allude to most of the time of being dispassionate and being unemotional. And in, in, in my prayer, um, I look to uh, be in that uh, stillness. And in that stillness, there is uh, dispassion. But the more dispassion and the, um, that I, that, um, I separate myself, the more I open myself for uh, the flow, these flows of energies to pass through me. Oh. Am I, and am I making sense to you? I can't say. Okay. Um, so you Why can't you say? Do you ever deal with anyone with compassion? Yes. 
And when do you decide? Well, I don't decide. It's this a, like situation, I said. I'm gonna do compassion. I, I don't decide. And in this situation, I'm gonna I'm gonna be dispassionate. I don't decide. Oh, it decides for you. It decides for me. Oh, so you go both ways. I, um, I would say that I, I don't know if I can say I can go both ways because sometimes I feel nothing for somebody suffering, and sometimes I do. So you do go both ways then. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, you had your hand? Yes. Okay. And then here. I think compassion is dangerous. Have you guys thought about, and ladies, thought about this since I made this? A, it's a good question. It's a deep question. Okay. I think compassion is dangerous and. What is dangerous. It? Uncom what is it? Discompassion. Well, you won't be getting married. <laughs> And I'm glad you find out first. <laughs> I think they're both dangerous, though. In what way? Because you think compassion is dangerous and dispassion is dangerous? Yeah, because the word passion, it does, to me, like she said, is you know, Kamala with feelings. It's passion, Kamala, sorry. It has feelings <laughs> attached to it. And dispassion is, lacks understanding, so it can be just as bad to me. If I look at it as... So you, where are you? I think I'm more dispassionate. You're dangerous. In the sense of, <laughs> You're right. dangerous. Your boo is dangerous. Because well, when, when you think of God's love, it's, it's more understanding opposed to leaning, you know, dispassionate or passionate to me. Okay. So, yeah, they both seem bad to me. Interesting. I'm glad you all thought about this question because all I want you to do is start thinking for yourself. Because once you start asking questions and thinking, you'll be amazed at what you realize. You really will. Um, let, let, let's go to Cheryl. She had her hand. And then here. Oh, right here. Yeah, sure. So which is right, the right way to deal with, uh, the best way to deal with people, with compassion or dispassion? I don't know. But I would say if I had to err, I would say dispassion. That doesn't mean you don't care. It just doesn't. It just means you're not all emotional. Because I, I heard. Um, I think I was listening to the radio program, and this guy said, "Well, if this, if they do this, then I'll do this." And, and I realized that when you have the emotion, maybe you have judgment, and we don't know. We we don't know who deserves what. And the, 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 uh, so if you're emotional, then maybe the judgment comes in, and that's bad because we don't know what's going on with somebody. And so are you a compassionate person or dispassionate? Um, I, I want to say compassionate, but I, I don't know. I you don't, don't want to tell the truth? Well, I guess I'm, I am emotional. I mean, I'm still, still emotional. So I would say probably compassionate. But I think you can have compassion without emotion. You can have compassion without emotion? Right. You don't have to get emotional about it. But you is, can it, be is it a good? Is this a good question or what? It's a great question. It's an amazing question. It's an amazing question. Yeah. Like, like. So, are you a compassionate person? I hope so, but that's too emotional sometimes. Like, if somebody's kind of like losing it, or like I had an experience where like my coworker was kind of losing it, and I just said, "Well, uh, I don't see it that." Like, I didn't get, I didn't buy into that I didn't get on that train. And that was good for her. Maybe that was compassion, because after that she's like, oh, oh, okay. Like, if you don't jump on the train of the emotion, people kind of, there's nothing there for them to fight against. It's but you like, had compassion for her? I think it was compassion for her, because she wasn't tripping out, you know? She kind of oh, okay. just let it go. Okay. It, yeah. So you think that it, the best way is to deal with people with compassion? Yes, but not emotion. And oh, I think okay. they're not, like I was like, I agree with Ermius, they're not, it's not the same. Like you, it's not mutually exclusive. Like you don't have to be all compelled, oh, you know. But you can do that without emotion. So do you go both ways? Yes. Ooh. <laughs> yes. Not like, but. Not like what? Yeah. I mean, you don't. <laughs> Like you, when you, I don't She's know. Like, it's like, a good question, though. It's a really it good is. It's a major question. Thank you, Cheryl. 
right here. Are you, what's the best way to deal with people? Uh, with compassion or dispassion? Yeah, one doesn't negate the other, and I think that they go hand in hand because they're both facets of authentic love. And so compassion comes from within, and it's not, it doesn't dictate how you act or react to a situation. So as I'm moving through my own emotions and becoming less of an emotional person, I realize that it allows me to actually give real love. So to not jump on the first thought that I'm thinking and, and go with that, I'm becoming more neutral. And so I think that if you have compassion within yourself, it, it's logical, it's practical, and it guides you to the proper response or the way you help somebody through a certain situation. Because I, with my own thing going on right now, um, there's moments where I've just wanted to be depressed and uh, you know, not move past my current situation, but becoming you know, neutral and realizing that you know, I have compassion within myself and the best way to show it is to not react, right? To kind of let myself stumble through things and um, that room has allowed myself, has, has allowed me to move forward in the best way possible. So if I can apply that to other people, then that's the best way to deal with them. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. So if I'm understanding you are compassionate, you deal with people in a compassionate way and sometimes a dispassionate way. It's really, it, it's, at first they seem like polar opposites and then I see that they really, you need one you know, to go with the other if you're going to handle it properly. You need the dispassion to go with the compassion? It, it's like peanut butter and jelly. I hate that. <laughs> All right, how about chocolate and peanut butter? I love that. Okay, there you go. It's like chocolate <laughs> and peanut butter. So uh, you go both ways, too? I, it, I don't even see it as both ways anymore. You need one to have the other. Oh, okay. I mean, if you're really going to show it in, you know, in a true, genuine way. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. One thing I've noticed since like being born again is that I'm really dispassionate when I deal with people, especially like my family and my parents. It seems like compassion. It's like you have your feelings and you want to make the other person's feelings feel better. And in dispassion, you can just tell people the truth and be honest, matter of fact, with them. How do they react to you? Uh, sometimes well, other times not. Like my mom, just like we went through this whole thing a few weeks ago where she just, we'd have our conversations on the phone, talk like half an hour, but it always end with her like hanging up on me. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like we, Amazing. Got, we got over that. So it's like, um, it just seems like dispassion is really the way to go because you can be truthful with people and not beat around the bush. Yeah. Interesting. Let me ask this young lady and then we'll. The will be done. Yes. Uh, so which is the best way? Compassion the, or dispassion? Uh, the best way is dispassion. Dispassion. Yes. And why do you say that? Uh, because it allows for just a, a more logical, clear mind, like for you to think in a more logical way. And um, in my life, I mean, I... And early on, I was taught, you know, compassion is everything. That's how you can relate to people. You can, like, you know, do for other people and all of that. And that's fine. But I think that when you, that it's dangerous to live a life that way because you're subject to emotions and you're subject to making decisions that are not logical because you're, you know, you feel compassionate for someone. So I think that the best way would be just to be dispassionate think things, you know, logically and just, and know, so it, it's, I, it's always steered me in the right way. Are you ever uh, a compassionate, in any situation, are you ever compassionate? Well, I'm a nurse, and so, right. like, you know, we are grilled. You have to have compassion, compassion. Yeah. And so, I mean, in the beginning, yeah, that was, like, something that I, that's why I got into the field. 
But then now I feel like my practice is more effective with my patients when I'm dispassionate because I kind of have like a barrier and I can, they don't know what's good for them. So what I'm, what I'm going to do might not feel good, might not, you know, be the best thing for like for in their mind, but the outcome will be better for them. Right. So I have to be dispassionate. And so uh, does passionate, uh, compassionate come up sometimes? The compassion, I mean, I work with kids, pediatrics, so like I, of course, when you see someone with like cancer or with like, you know, something like disease, you feel, I do feel, I do feel, um, it might, it's not compassion, it's more like, uh, it's unfortunate, you have that, those, those thoughts, like, oh, this is unfortunate, this is happening to this person, but I, I mean. So sometimes you look at a kid at the hospital, yeah. wherever you work, and they have some type of disease, you say that that's unfortunate? Um, I mean, it, it, yeah, yeah, I think it's like, uh, it's sad sometimes to see what they go through and all of that, and it's, but. And why do you think it's unfortunate? Um, I think more than anything, it, it happens mostly when it's like someone that reminds me of like my nephew or like. Oh, I see. Yeah, but yeah. it's only for a quick moment and then I'm over it and then I keep doing what I have to do. So what is it like knowing that Joel is neither compassionate or dispassionate? I like that he's dispassionate because I think he likes to think, like, look, he looks at circumstances or situations objectively and he's not really, he doesn't get caught up in the whole feeling and the mess of it. And it's, I, I like that about him. You like that about him? Yeah. All right, so we get married. I don't want to hear no mess. <laughs> you ain't passionate. <laughs> you don't love me. But. You are so dispassionate. I like that about him, however. Uh, I mean. Oh, however. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, no. <laughs> You know, it's, it's a good trait to have as a person. But however what? <laughs> <laughs> you ever want to hear this however thing? <laughs> however. No, I, I mean, I, <laughs> I can see what, why you're asking me that. Like, and why, like, because see what it, now? I can see why you're asking it. You're saying it like, you know that he's not like that compassionate or whatever. I know that. No, I, I know why you're asking me because it sounds bad, like someone oh. that's dispassionate. Um, I don't know how that's going to work. You don't know how what? How that's going to work with like, you know, the whole passion I know. thing. Will you still marry him knowing he's dispassionate? She just found out after she got married tomorrow. <laughs> and she doesn't feel it. You already knew. Wow, you're like, I'm going to fix him, huh? I'll make, <laughs> I'll make it right. My love will do it. <laughs> however what <laughs> I mean I don't know I don't know how I feel about it we're gonna, when you get married we're going to replay this when you're, when you're angry and you're calling me up ah, he don't love me I'm like you didn't want passion so it's passion is having it's ha having feelings of passion for someone is that bad having feelings of passion? I'll tell you in a minute. It's okay. a good question though. Okay. Very good question. Uh, right here. And then, oh. yeah. So, uh, real fast, which is the best way to deal with people? With compassion? All people. Compassion or dispassion? I think dispassion. You think? Yes, I Which one are you? Dispassion. You're dispassionate? Yes. Where did this happen? <laughs> the rapper. <laughs> And why do you say so? Why are you dispassionate? Have you always been that way? No. And, and, and what does it feel like to be dispassionate? It doesn't feel anything. It doesn't feel anything? Nothing. So you're like a cold person? Yes. A cold person? Yes. Amazing. And so you like being that way? Yes. And why? Because I think with compassion, at least when I do have compassion, I think, well, first of all, I think compassion is like having pity for somebody, having emotional feeling about something, and you don't have the same clarity. 
And I think many people have said it, you know, when you are dispassionate, you can see things objectively and give a better a better perspective on things. And were you a compassionate person before you realized that? Was I a compassionate person before I realized I was dispassionate? Yes, I knew, I, I didn't realize I was compassionate until I became dispassionate, something oh. like that. And, and so how did you become dispassionate? I think following kind of what you've said in the past, just, you know, not having an opinion over things, not, you know, doing the silent prayer, being aware of your thoughts, like those moments have brought me to clarity of, you know, how to become dispassionate. And so do you deal with your son with dispassion or compassion? Some days I deal with them with dispassion, and some days I deal with them with compassion because I'm so not. So you go both ways? Yes. Amazing. Yes. And how do you decide which one you want to use on him? I think kind of to what you're saying, what he was saying is like, it's, it's not until I become aware that I'm being compassionate that I can become dispassionate. But um, I think that possibly because I haven't overcome every possible thing in my life, I realize, you know, that's where compassion comes. Because maybe there's something I haven't resolved, something I haven't overcome. Right. And so the compassion kind of just pops up. And then when I become aware of the compassion, that's when I realize um, that I'm compassionate, and then I can... Was Jesus a compassionate person or dispassionate? You heard of Jesus? Yes. He was the white guy with the good hair. <laughs> was he compassionate or dispassionate? I don't know. I, I, my guess would be he was dispassionate because he um, spoke the truth. and he, he didn't. he fed the hunger, he, didn't... he healed the sick, mm -hmm. he wept. He did all the what's the things. He even made wine. Mm -hmm. And now I'm hearing that he made pot. <laughs> did you hear that Jesus made pot? It's from the earth. <laughs> Remember, it's from the earth. <laughs> so what? I said he changed the parsley Yeah. <laughs> That's right. And so if he was not compassionate, how was he able to do all those things? Well, so did, I guess he felt pity for people and he, he felt, did he, so did, he, did Jesus feel pity? Uh, is pity and compassion the same thing? Yeah, it does fall under the same thing. Oh, okay. Amazing. I'll come back to you. Okay. I, I want to, I'm trying to move a little faster time going. I've been yelled at so many times. Uh, Will, what's the best way to deal with people? Dispassionate. Dispassionate. And yeah. why do you say that? I, I feel like as long as you do everything in love, then dispassion is definitely the way to go. And what does dispassion feel like? It doesn't really feel like anything. Are you a compassionate person or dispassionate? Mostly dispassionate. Mostly? Yeah. Sometimes you are compassionate. Yeah, don't be twisted. Yeah. You're making noise. Oh, I'm you? making noise? Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh -huh. Compassionate. Um, well, I looked up the definition of compassion and dispassion. No, here. but first, before it? you tell me, right. are, you a com are you compassionate sometimes and then sometimes dispassionate? Dispassionate. You're never compassionate. I attempt, by the grace of God, to do everything in love. And... In that way, I am compassionate, doing everything in love, but in, in a dispassion point of view, perspective way. And what you say, in what way you are compassionate? Doing everything in love. You're compassionate when you're doing it in love? Yes. I bet you are. <laughs> um, and then you're dispassionate when you're not doing it in love? I'm dispassionate, doing everything in love. And when are you compassionate? Simultaneously. What? <laughs> so sometimes you, so you, you go both ways? Mm, I wouldn't really say so. But you say sometimes you're compassionate, sometimes you're dispassionate, right? But you do them together. I'd say whenever you're doing everything in love that you are being compassionate. Because you asked her about Jesus. Right. Jesus did everything in love. He is love. 
And was he compassionate? In his dispassion, yeah. Boy. How do you not follow what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying, Jesse. <laughs> so you're saying Jesus was compassionate in his dispassion? Million percent, because he is love and he did everything in love. And love is compassion in it. It's and and why, do you, why do you say love is compassion? Mm. I love this fellowship. This is so good. <laughs> because a preacher would get up and preach and never know what you think and what you're concerned about. And go ahead. Well, whenever you become born again, then, you know, the Holy Spirit can start to work in you and you can start to do everything in love by just being how you, um, how you often tell us, you know, how to, you know, wanting to be like, just being, just living your life, and just being is just being, is being dispassionate, because you're not getting all like, you know, taken away by these emotions. And uh, I think this is worth reading. The definition so of dispassionate you say, you on say, here. Just before you read it. All right. Passion is both dispassion and compassion. Nah. Be dispassionate, but do everything in love. And if you do that, you're being compassionate totally, and dispassionate. Totally. Oh, okay. Totally. Right. And Dale had to go get some coffee to wash down his mess. I had to get some brandy to put in the coffee. <laughs> well, look, I think this, is, I think this yeah. is profitable information. Look, compassion, the definition online, it says, compassion, sympathetic pity and concern for the sufferings or misfortunes of others. Right? That's what it says. Right. Dispassionate definition says, not influenced by strong emotion, and so able to be rational and impartial. And, and, you, and which one are you? Dispassionate. Oh, okay. Yeah. But mixed up with a little... Comp nope. <laughs> mixed up with love. And love is compassion. Love is Jesus Christ, man. Oh, okay. Yeah. Can you interpret what he just said? Um, I think he's trying to say that... Uh, we can't be compassionate like Jesus was, but dispassionate, we are um, kind of pulling away from what Jesus is. And uh, I, I think that he has a point where uh, dispassion, people really aren't compassion. For example, if you see someone going and getting a, um, like someone died, they come to you and they, and they say, oh, you know, my mom died. So you're, you're trying to feel for them. So you, you kind of like take a step back. Oh, OK. So you, you kinda, you, you're trying to feel for them because they're going through the fact that mama died. Right. Oh, OK. And how do you make yourself feel for them? You try to like understand, but you really don't. Oh, I see. You pretend to understand. Right. And you pretend to be feeling something for them. Right. But you're, you're really not. Yeah, I think that. Oh, okay. So are you a compassionate person? No. You're a dispassionate person? Yes. Was Jesus compassionate or dispassionate? I think he was compassionate. And so why aren't you like Jesus then? Because there's no way I can be like Jesus. Why not? It's, well, he's perfect, I think. And in, in, in that sense where he came and he was perfect, we're all striving to be that perfect image of, of Jesus, but... So you're striving to be perfect? Yeah. By doing what? <laughs> uh, just being. I guess a lot of stuff that you say is just be and, and observe, and you really can't ever meet that, that perfectness of Jesus. So why are you striving for something that you can't ever make? True, yeah. And you say? I say that, um, well, it's just hard to, to, to be compassionate, like when, when the, uh, in the Bible where the, uh, the prostitute comes up and, and they're going to throw stones at her, he, he, he showed compassion for her and said, you know, let the, the, the person that had no sin throw the first stone. So, but at the same time, you're, you're, you know, what she did wasn't right. So why are you trying to be perfect? You're striving to be perfect, but you don't believe that you can ever be perfect. Why are you striving for something that you don't believe is possible? I, 
I thought you said that it's, it, it is pot. Well, you're living in perfect, if, if you're perfect. I'm sorry? Can you be perfect? I don't think you can be perfect. Can so why you? are you striving for something that you don't think you could be, become? I think that's the goal, isn't it? The goal is to what? To be perfect, like Jesus But you was. don't believe you could be perfect, you said? Uh, I don't know how I said it, but I, I think that, I think the this question is. This is not a, just relax. Hey, bye. Calm down. It's not a test. So relax, all right? Just relax. We're fellowshipping. It. All that. Why are you striving to be perfect if you don't believe you can be perfect? Why strive for something you don't believe is possible? I guess I'm not striving to be perfect. Oh, so when you say that, you're just playing? <laughs> <laughs> You try no, to you kind of lost me, but here's uh, huh? the question is, should you treat people with compassion or dispassion? Right. I don't think people can be compassionate like Jesus was. You don't think so? Why not? Because he is, you know, total love, and we really don't live up to that. And as humans, we, we kind of like have to be dispassionate because that's just our nature. And so what's the purpose of being born again if you're going to just have that? Yeah, you're right. It's, that old same nature. That, that makes sense. So dispassionate, you, you deal with people that way because I guess you're just never born again. So you deal with people in a dispassionate way? I do, yes. And instead of compassion? Correct. And, and why is that? I don't know. You went, like when I... At work, let's say I'm at work and someone comes in and they tell me about the story of, you know, they lost somebody. Yeah. I don't even know how to deal with them. I don't know how to explain to them, you know, hey, I feel for you because I don't know if anybody's ever had that where you're, you know, you hear someone's tragedy and you don't really know how to, how to you know, comfort them because it hasn't either happened to you or it, it's just weird the way um, you, you don't feel for them the way if it were to happen to you, so. And you think you need to feel for them? I think that's what society puts on us, where, yeah, you know, you have to be compassionate towards them. But at the same time, you, you, what comes out of you is, you know, hey, I'm sorry to hear about your loss. How do you deal with that? And um, it, it's just strange the way it happens, and you, you want to, like, comfort them, but you're, you're not really re meeting their, their need oh, of, I see. Of, of understanding where they're coming from. And so I got to move, but you're saying that when somebody died in your office, a person comes in, I lost my friend, died, and you don't really feel anything, but yeah. you want to feel something. Right, or sometimes they lost um, money or they need money and they come up for a loan. Yeah. I don't know how to explain to them, you know, I, that I really don't believe their story. They're just coming in for money. <laughs> How about this thing where, too bad you ain't getting my money <laughs> if you don't believe him. Yeah, a lot of times I get asked from my employees, hey, I need a, I need a loan. And I from your say, employees? Yeah. And do you give it to them? No. I, oh. Well, I tend to because of, of, of what I'm trying. <laughs> so when they ask for Beta it, boss. I ask them to give me a reason. <laughs> And so you don't even believe it, but you still give them the money anyway? I do. I give them the money because it's, it, it sounds to them, or it sounds to, to what I'm hearing, that they need it. So I kind of put it out there, and then they sign a, a document saying that I'll take it out of their check. And do you do that? Yes. You take it back? I take it back. Oh, okay. Otherwise, they're not going to pay you. They'll never pay you back. And one time I did borrow, loan some money to somebody. He went to Mexico, and he never came back. Uh, but, you know. <laughs> And you learned from that, right? I did. Good. Don't do that, man. Yeah. Do not loan your employees money. You ain't gonna get it back. Yeah, then they get mad and then they sue for workers' comp. They get mad? Yeah, they get mad. Because you won't loan them the money? Right. And then they sue you? Yeah. These are Mexicans? They're, they're, <laughs> they're from, yeah. Well, I have some of them from, some of them are also um, Filipino and they are even worse. Latin America. So the best, if you let a Mexican have it, and now a Filipino too, just say, if you don't let me see your green card, <laughs> I'm going to call the cops. Well, They'll pay you back then. Right. We're supposed to hire them with, <laughs> with proper documents. No, don't loan money, man. You're the boss. Right. All right? Right. Okay, so you say you are a dispassionate person, but you would like to be compassionate. 
Yeah, I would like to have more compassion for people uh, oh, okay. in general. All right. It's, it's not good to not be compassionate, but All right. it's just the way I feel. Did you have your hand? Yeah, sorry, uh, that was, yeah. That was for something else? No, it was for this. Hand. Okay, go ahead. So what's the best way, compassionate or dispassion? I think the, the best way, I think, is dispassionate. You guessing? Well, I'm just based upon my life. I've lived both ways. Oh, you have? I've gone both ways. you gone both ways? Yeah. Amazing. So, <laughs> a lot of both ways people here. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, Maybe we should start a, a, another aspect of society that says both way club. Yeah, no. And then get some civil rights. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, none of that. So, um, I, so are you a compassionate person or dispassionate? Now. I'm, now I'm dispassionate. And what happened to your compassion? It withered away with with my sense, I guess. And what does dispassionate feel like? Dispassionate feels like just everything just go, like you allow God to just do what he needs to do and you, you, you let him enter you and then he does whatever he does with, without your, like, you don't have a thought behind it. You just let it go. Like if are someone comes in. Are you always dispassionate? No, I wasn't. I mean, I was now, are you always before. dispassionate or you go sometimes now compassionate? Now I'm, I'm all, I'm all, all dispassionate. You're always, in every situation, dispassionate now. It, it seems that way, yeah. You have any friends? Yeah. <laughs> Anybody left? They give me a hug after I'm dispassionate with them. <laughs> and they say, through your dispassion, I feel compassion. Amazing. Yeah. All right, so you were compassionate one time, and now you're dispassionate. It, it's almost like if you're totally compassionate, it, it, it's, it's, it, it doesn't, it's like, yeah, there's pity, and then when you get pity, you get emotion into it, and then emotions into it, and then things don't get done right, and then you approach the situation based upon your thoughts and your emotions and your will. What, and what your, was Jesus? Was he compassionate or dispassionate? He was dispassionate. Jesus was dispassionate? Yeah. Are you sure about that? Yeah. Why are you saying that? Because I don't, I don't know. You, ever, you don't know? Yeah. You ever read about him? Yeah. How, why do you say he was dispassionate there? Because through his dispassion, he was compassionate. Oh, you went to the same school with Will, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because by being dispassionate, it, it automatically, it's, it comes, that's where the compassion, like, like with, like if, like if he were to see someone like, say he were to, to see the woman that, you know, she's getting stones thrown. Um, I, don't, I don't know if it was the compassion. I don't know even know if they use the right words. It just seems like he had dispassion first to say, hey, you guys, like, we're done here. Like, you guys are not doing that. And as soon as he said we're not doing that, the compassion came. So was Jesus uh, showing compassion when he told them, no, let the you without sin throw the first stone? He, he was, was showing discom compassion or dispassion? It's dispassion. And why do you say that with dispassion? They were about to throw a stone at, and kill the woman. Yeah, yeah. How is that dispassionate? Because he did, there was no emotion behind it. It was just, it was no, there was no pity. It was just like, hey, don't do that. Like, you guys don't do that. He didn't tell them not to do it. He told them to throw it. Well, he said, if, if this happens, then, right. then, then throw it, you know? It's, there's so much logic behind that. You know, to me, there's no logic in being so oh, emotional and compassionate, all, all pity and all that. Okay. It makes no sense to me. All right. And, and Ben Turry got the last word on this, and I know Will want to do a quick follow-up. So, Ben Turry, which is the best way to deal with people, with compassion or dispassion? Dispassion. Why do you say that? Because it eliminates the thinking and the going back and forth and saying what people want to hear. So that, that's how I have chosen to start dealing with a lot of things. And it, it works. Are you a compassionate person? No. Have you ever been compassionate? I think so. And it changed? E, well, I think I've honestly been more dispassionate with more things. Like if you ask me what I've been compassionate about, I can't. Right. Yeah, there's nothing that's coming to my mind. And so... Uh, are you always dispassionate? Or are you compassionate with some people or and situation and then dispassionate with some? 
I would say dispassionate, because I don't know what I would say to someone is, oh, I understand where you're coming from. But to me, that's not compassion. That's just acknowledging what someone said. What would you do, uh, like this young man was saying, if someone came to work and said, oh, my mother or somebody died last night, how would you deal with that situation? Have you ever dealt with something like that? I have, yes. And how, how would you deal with that? Um, actually, I was having lunch with someone the other day, and he was telling me that his wife suddenly passed away. I honestly didn't feel anything. And Ooh, she's so cold. No, 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 no. No, because that, that's what I'm she saying. Is like cold. <laughs> well, no, because the thing is I can't I it what about that would draw something emotional in me? I don't have a wife. I've never been close to death. Like it didn't stir anything in me for me to have to say something to him as far as, oh, I'm sorry for your loss, because the truth is I don't I'm, I'm not sorry for your loss. Like, her death is in whatever God's plan was for her. So why would I be sorry about that? Amazing. I'm, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, what would you say to the guy? I don't even remember because the whole I'm sorry thing just, because I was there for something else, like for business. It wasn't for to talk about his wife, but it was, it just kind of came up in the conversation. So I think more, he more or less needed to just say it, just to say it for whatever reason. So, I mean, I don't know him that well. I never knew his wife. And again, I'm not sorry, because the thing about death is that we're all going to die physically. Not me. Well, that's, but, but. Real, I'm here forever. <laughs> But realistically, I don't see the point in being sorry about something that is inevitable. It, oh. It's going to happen. They were a little older, and she was not a, a well woman, so it was almost expected to happen oh, sooner than later. What so. do you think about this situation at the hospital? You see kids who are sick. Would you have compassion for them? Um, if I had compassion for them, I don't know how I would display it. Like, how do you, how, what, what does the compassion towards the child look like? Because is there something in my compassion that's going to make that child better? Is there anything that I can do by showing compassion that's going to help the situation yeah. other than make people around me more comfortable because I'm conforming to however society says that I have to be in the face of something tragic like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't. Very interesting. So I'm not sure. I'm just not sure what the benefit of the compassion is. Oh, OK. All is right. that, do you, I mean, do you have an answer for that? Or is yeah, there I mean, a different way to see I it? I just wanted to hear from you guys first. Yeah, absolutely. Will, you had your hand? Mm, I mean, she wraps it up pretty good. So you, you, don't, you don't have no, a hand cool. up anymore? That's cool. What did she wrap up really good? Um. <laughs> It's just, I, I believe I've already said it, just do everything in love, and you fulfill the entire law. You love God with all your heart, you love, you love all people, and I mean... How do you know you love God? Through Jesus Christ. No, how do you know you love God? Well... It's not me doing the loving, but it's God drawing me in. How do you know you love God? Because Jesus, Jesus Christ loves me. How do you know you love God? Because of the promises and everything in the Bible. What does that mean? You don't understand what that means? No. It means that for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son to die on the cross so that we may have eternal life. And I how mean, do you know you love God? Because Jesus Christ, the son of God, came down for us and lived a sinless and perfect life. And because I have accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, that means I love God. How did you accept him? I believed on, in him. But everything you're telling me is about how he loved you. Sure. But you're not telling me how you love him. How do you know you love him? Well, the only reason I can love him is because he first loved me. 
What? <laughs> Boy, it's not cold out of school like that. You better make me drink. What are you talking about? <laughs> it's the word of God I'm quoting. So what? It's the word of God I'm quoting, man. But how do you know you love, you say you love God, right? Yes. And how do you know you love God? Because God loves me. And I have Jesus Christ, therefore I have God and I love God. And Jesus is love. God is love. So therefore, if I have God, then I love. What do you mean you have Jesus Christ? Because I believe in him. And so believing in Jesus made you love God? Absolutely. Uh, amazing. And how did you believe? By, because God, I was part of God's elect. He just chose me by, the, by his grace. Oh, okay. He drew me Interesting. Into, unto him. Yeah. He grew you into him and under him? Sure, both. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. Do you have your hand? Yes. Okay. I Googled it. Jesus had you compassion. You Googled it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Jesus had compassion. You did it right now? Yes. Okay. He has compassion because he saw the suffering. That's what I feel. That what you said on Google? Yes. Oh, amazing. That is, all. that is amazing. Google's so smart. <laughs> yeah. How do you know when you love someone? What, what kind of love? I don't know. Do you know? Like you just ask them, how does he, uh, how, if he loves? You oh. feel it. <laughs> <laughs> you just feel it. You know what I mean? You feel it? Yeah. Don't you feel it when you love someone? I'm asking you. <laughs> uh, yeah, you just feel it. You feel love for Joel? <laughs> I just love him. How you know? I just feel it. You feel love for him? <laughs> Tell him so the world can know. You mind. Hands off. You don't want to answer that? Uh-uh. You don't want to answer if you feel love for him or not? You um, know, like, you're going to answer this. <laughs> Doug is waiting, Joel. Do I feel it? I don't feel it. You don't feel emotional love for Joel? No. Ooh, all that dispassion stuff. <laughs> So if you don't feel it for how you going to come together as husband and wife? I don't know. You smoke pot? No. <laughs> yeah, you better get her high. <laughs> oh, this wedding ain't happening. So you really don't feel love for him? I mean, like the feeling? No. Really? I so mean, I, I care for him and like I want the best. How do you him. know you care for him? Um, like, I, I don't want like anything bad to happen to him and like. But I know people who have puppies and they don't want anything bad to happen. I saw a lady at, what is he, in, what was this woman in the post office over with a dog? Mm -hmm. I'm like, why you got that dog in here? But so you just feel like you feel compassion for him. I mean, uh, no. You just care about him. I mean, yeah, I do. Oh. You love her, Joel? I can't wait to hear this. No, I don't. I mean, to me, I don't think that, you know, I think that you, you know when you, you know, feel something. But I think that um, we haven't been, you know, together that long. So I don't feel, I don't, no, I don't, I can't say I love her. In that Ooh. emotional type of Maybe y'all should be saying this right now. <laughs> well, I, no. <laughs> but I think Maybe to we me, should move on back to compassion and just <laughs> <laughs> But this is a little deep. <laughs> Isn't it kind of deep? Y'all just playing, right? No. <laughs> it's a real deal. <laughs> Amazing. Everybody want in on it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Okay. Oh. okay. Isn't it funny? Well, well when, I think your name ain't Doug. In my opinion, though, <laughs> is I think that you know, 
that takes time to me. What takes time? If you, if you if you feel like you love somebody. I ain't never been with a woman didn't feel it right away. Father, right away. Huh? In what way though? That way. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's what brings you together. Yeah, I'm taking this holy okay. stuff too far. <laughs> but what's the purpose? And I'm not saying that, because I don't believe like the, the, I don't necessarily believe that it has to be seven years, right? But why do you say the seven year thing if you're supposed to, if you're supposed to love somebody right away? Well, maybe by then y'all would have found that love in seven years. Um, I say seven years, but it doesn't have to be seven right. years. Right. You know. Right. You kind of get to know each other and all that kind of stuff. All right? Then why do you say seven years then? You give if you're people supposed time. to feel it right away, like you said. No, you're not supposed to feel it right away. But when men and women come together, you do feel something. It may not be the right kind right. of love, but you feel that something that brings you together in that fallen state love. So then if, if you're together... So y'all don't feel that way at all, what you doing? What should, we, what should you say that you... Well, I'm just trying to understand it to see if I... Uh, should you say... So then if you feel that kind of fallen state love, should you be running around telling each other you love each other even before a certain amount of time just because you feel... Uh, not if you want your life, I wouldn't tell her. <laughs> you just show just, it. Right. But how can you not feel something? Though? I mean, the reason God well, allowed the feel, fallen state to you happen. You feel the fallen state stuff. Huh? You feel the fallen state stuff, but oh. you don't go around, you know, saying, I love you, I love you, I love you. Right, yeah, that's not necessary. But God allowed the fallen state to happen so men and women can come together and make babies, you know, get married, make babies, and once you have a truckload of babies, right. then you stop and come out of the fallen state. Right. But you need that to come together with. Right. So you need some lust to come together. Yes. Right. So now so, you love her. Well, there's lust. <laughs> there's yeah, lust. Yeah, he love you. Huh? There's lust. Okay. But I don't want to, if you call it in what you're defining. Well, that's what people call love. Maybe. Maybe what? Because that's what brings you together, and then you overcome it. Right. It's good that you're waking up and you know what the real deal. Right. Right. And that, that lust is bringing you together. You become husband and wife. You make all the babies. And then you love her with the real love. And she'll love you with the real love. Right. And then you guys will be together until death do your part. And your kids will be fine. Because you won't traumatize the kids. Yeah, I understand the after the marriage part. The right. Before the marriage part, I don't quite. Well, they understand. call the lust love. Okay. You know about the lust part? <laughs> I ain't gonna ask you if you feel it or not, but you do know about it, right? That's a fact, yeah. Not really. <laughs> um, I don't necessarily think that lust is what like makes you fall in love with someone. That's what it does for men. Well, I mean, in general, for me, men I think lust is love. They really do. Hmm. I don't think lust is love the way. That's because you know what love is now. Before you knew what love is, you didn't think lust was love? No. I don't think, I don't think that, right, I, I never, just because I lust somebody, I don't say that I love them. Oh, yeah? Amazing. You've been holy all your life, man. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, I, I, I forgot what I was going to say. Um, so you don't think lust is love? Yeah, I don't. I guess women don't think that that's love, right? Yeah, no. I know. Oh, okay. So I, so I guess I'm just like wondering, like the the feeling part, like feeling like that love. Um, women pretend they love you so that they can control you. <laughs> they don't really be feeling anything for you that much, unless they have come together in lust and they feel that, you know, that uh, addict and drug addict desire. But women are really looking for a father's love. They're looking for the real deal. And that's why they kind of, they're disappointed when they, don't, they thought that they had a man that loved them. But later found out it wasn't love. He just 
really lust after her and you end up cheating and all that kind of stuff. What she's saying is should she feel something? Should she feel like, like some confirmation to say like like a knowing, like yes, this is the right person. This is Oh I see. Like uh no, God'll show you. You're just, you got a date, get to know each other. You're going to go through your little ups and downs and yelling and stuff. But then if you seek and first the kingdom of God, you would know if he's the right one. And that way you would never be disappointed if you should get married. But if you marry him out of a feeling like lust and stuff like that, you end up being disappointed. That makes sense? But if you don't have a feeling, don't try to mate one. Just treat each other with respect, have fun, do your thing. And it's working out. That makes sense? Yeah, I yeah, I guess it does. What's wrong? I think she's trying to say that she should she be looking for a feeling. Are you to trying confirm. to say that? I mean, I don't know. Uh, it's complicated. <laughs> Do I need counseling or something? <laughs> this sounds like a counseling session. <laughs> I know, I don't want to take up too much time. Huh? I don't want to take up too much time. No, Maybe no, this is you. No problem. Um, what is the problem? The, the, pa the, the, not passion, but the feeling of like knowing like, like this is it, like this is the one. How long you been dating? A year. Oh, I see. Don't worry about that now. Just keep going and it'll go the way it should. Don't get in your head like, do I really love him or I don't feel it. You know, don't go with feelings, really. Go with what is right. And, you, and God got your back. You'll be fine. Okay. And when it's time to get married, you would know. And he would know. And you'll do it. Because he already left it. <laughs> you got that part down pat. <laughs> <laughs> so it'll work out. Don't worry about the feeling. Do not look for feelings. Don't try to make yourself feel the same way. It's best not to do that. Because you'll go nuts if you get into feelings. You really will, because Satan will use that to make you doubt now, and you know, why he's not answering the phone, why you don't come over, you start tripping. So if you're not having those feelings, you're blessed. All right? So don't try to make yourself happy. Okay. Because those feelings eventually start wearing down, and now he's looking at some other woman, and you wonder why he's looking at some other woman, it'll be a mess. All right? So you're fortunate that you don't have that. Okay. All right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you have your hand? Oh, yeah, I was going to you want to say something? No. You feel better now? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Well, I just remember in my situation, um, when I was with my ex, I would always ask him, you know, why do you love me? And his answer was, because you love me. And so I realize now, you know, that... Um, he really never truly loved me because right. love isn't lust. It's not the sex. It's or that. I'm sorry, uh, but it's really it's the commitment to coming together, seeing the future of raising a child, of creating a stable home, and raising a child. Like that's love. Love is, in spite of how you feel of the person, it's like doing what's right. And all honestly, based on what I just heard from these two, I like the way their relationship is going. That's the way you're supposed to date. It's not supposed to be about all this feeling and worried about if he loved me and I love him and blah, blah, blah. I like the way that's going. I could have seen myself a lot of headaches that I'd known this before I did. So I like the way it's going. That way you can sleep at night if he calls, fine. If he doesn't, fine. So you're doing fine. All right? I like that. You got yourself a good man that's not into all that. And he has a good woman. That's the way it's supposed to be. So don't think you don't love him. Or don't think you do love him. Just there. Alright? And so what are you gonna do about your man? There's nothing to do. Why not? Because he's not around. Oh good. Cause you don't want a man that loves you just because you love him. Yeah, I, f I found that out. That's mama's love. It, yeah. That's yeah. I, I, it came very clear to me. Oh, okay. Alright. Yes, James. Oh, I then here. I have several questions from the YouTube live chat. All right. Malcus How much time I have, Hermes? Yeah, five minutes. Do I really? <laughs> That's crazy. Yes. Nick from St. Louis, Malkuth X, asks. Who's X? 
Malkuth X. He's he's oh, he's a black he Muslim. X. He said Nick from St. Louis, Malcolm X. <laughs> Go ahead. He says, Jesse, when you give two options and someone doesn't choose one or the other, you reply, Can you ride two horses at the same time? Right. By insisting that they choose, aren't you imposing your own will? I'm not insisting that they choose. I'm just asking, can you ride two horses at the same time? Because some people are saying they go both ways. And so that means that they believe that they can uh, have compassion and dispassion. Lots of people donating to the building fund, by the way. Oh, and good. they're asking Thank you. for the update. Yeah, I'll give you an update in a minute. Rafa says, comp gave a super chat <clears throat> and says, compassion is driven by emotions and lies. Dispassionate is driven by logic, truth, and facts. Amazing. Oh, amazing. And did then, you have your hand? I did. Oh, okay. I'll come to you in a minute. I have two or three more. Important. Okay, go ahead. Will asks, should we love our kids more or our wife more? The same. There's a different kind of love that the love we were just talking about that make the babies, but you love your wife and your kids the same. Okay. Here's With God's a, love. Okay. Joe asks about the silent prayer. Does the observing the thoughts continue throughout the day? I can see that it does sometimes for me. Joe, yeah, you Joseph. should be aware of them at all times. You're going to go in and out while you're growing, but you want to be in the presence of God, so that's why you have to stay out of the thoughts. Okay, last one. This is a super chat from Jada72208. All right. If you become what you hate, are the Democrats going to turn into Donald Trump, LOL? Absolutely. We're going to have all little Trumps running around. They're all going to vote for him. We won't tell you, though. Yes, and then here. Four more years. Four more years. <clears throat> uh, I just wanted to talk a little bit about Paul. He says it's better not to marry. But he, says that, he said that it's not a commandment that he gives to people not to marry. He says if you burn in the flesh, and then it's best that you marry. Right. But he says uh, that that is something to overcome. But that's, um, to me, the law of the attraction is, is that, you know, we come in in a fallen state, and in that fallen state, we seem to need another person to validate us or to make us complete. But the whole purpose, uh, it seems to me, of, of true marriage is to come out of that, is to, is to come out of it. But, but, I remember uh, starting the, the path early. I'll say, real quick, I'll say it quick because I know you have other people. Yeah. I remember earlier when I started in, uh, the path in 19 years old, and I did get in that, in that holy state where I wanted to be holy, and I thought that, I, that you had to be dispassionate towards, towards everyone, but there was still a longing there for, for another person. Um, and I sort of ignored it and pretended to be holy and ended up marrying somebody that didn't fulfill that, that passion in me. And I was with this person uh, wanting to be dispassionate, not paying attention to the, this need that I had to connect in that way. So at the time, you knew you wanted to be dispassionate with your wife? I wanted to be dispassionate. I wanted not to pay attention Why did you to want this that? need um, because I didn't see things correctly. Oh, I see. Uh, it's OK to have uh, these feelings of attraction and sex, we call arrows, in your fallen state. But that's just something to come out of it. That's going to bring you to that, to that person, that uniqueness that you see in another person. Um, and it's, just, it's a matter of, of coming, out, uh, coming out of it um, okay. and having that real love that you talk about, um, which is uh, heavenly and not uh, physical. So All I'm right. going to make that point. Amazing. So thank, you. thank you, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes. OK, so I know that I'm in love. And it's not necessarily a feeling. I can just see the way that my life has changed. I feel more of a connection to myself, to God, and I can see now that love isn't like a Disney princess movie, uh, that it's really based off of um, respect, logic, and uh, when you say that a woman doesn't have love to give, perhaps that's true. I, I have to kind of digest that one a bit more, but uh, for me it's been really exciting and eye-opening so there is an element of feeling to it but it's also something that I don't feel needs to be reciprocated because in my situation I can't say for sure whether I'm gonna absolutely marry this person but to me it doesn't matter because it hasn't
taken away from who I am. It's just added to my life experience and the way that I see things and my openness to realize that, you know, I'm, I'm wrong and I've tried, I need to be right with myself before becoming, you know, uh, being in a partnership with somebody else. Partner, don't partner, you yeah. partner. Um, so do you feel, so you say you do not feel love for your boyfriend? Uh, I don't really, I don't know what the title between the two of us would be at this point. Or do uh, you feel something for him? Oh, absolutely. And what does that feel like? It's something I, I'm not thinking of. It's not this all-consuming thing. It, it feels healthy because I am on a good path. And even if it, you know, this isn't meant to be, uh, I just, I can't stop whatever's flowing through me because it, it just, it's right. Do you and believe that women have love to give? Like I said, that's a really, that's a difficult one. Uh, and why is that difficult? Because I'm I'd, glad like, to, you I'd like to just say yes. Um, why do you want to say yes? Because it's in my nature to be emotional and think that, you know, a woman can do the same things that a man can and that we can give the same things that a man can. But I know that that's not true. It's right. just that when I you know, met this person, uh, even before he asked me on a date, there was just this, uh, a, it set me in a different trajectory in my life where I just automatically started to want better things for myself right on. and figuring out for myself how to do that. So I couldn't, I, I can't really help but credit him for facilitating that change because I started to see what, what I loved in him, realizing that it was a reflection of what I loved about myself that I'd forgotten about for so long. Right. Yeah. Amazing. The, the, the beauty about what you ladies are going through, you're not married, and you're seeking God. So you're overcoming that because if a, a woman has a husband, she has to go through a husband to get to God. But if she's not married, mm -hmm. she goes mm -hmm. straight to him herself. And so by you guys going straight to God without having a man over you, that's why you are, are dealing with these other kind of issues that women who don't seek out the God don't understand. Yeah, the awareness in yeah. itself means everything. And that's right. And so that's probably why you're not, you two are not feeling all that stuff in a fallen state because you've already forgiven, you do the silent prayer, and so you're just with him in the way that it should be. Just let it happen, you get to know each other, and you don't need all that crap. So while you're dating, you don't have to be going through all that fighting and worrying and, and wondering. So when you, and that way, you'll come together the right way and things will be fine. That's the, I don't know if it's a problem, but that's what happens, though, when you wake up before you get married. It changes everything, your relationship, how you deal with people and everything. So you're really blessed in that way. You know what I'm saying? You, uh, you avoid a lot of headaches. And you are too, because he'd be wondering, who over there? Did I hear somebody in the background? <laughs> <laughs> who was that coughing? <laughs> You're like, that was me. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> no, it wasn't. You won't have to go through all that, that job. So you're blessed. But that's what happened with you. That's why I say, if you're going to get married in Proverbs, uh, I mean, I like it both ways. I mean, I like it this way. I don't know what I mean. <laughs> but I totally understand where you guys are coming from. You've dealt with the issues. You've forgiven your parents. You're becoming yourself. So you don't really have that need for a human love because you already be in love. So when you do come together with a good man, it just kind of works itself out. That's why I tell guys, too, they should wait just seek the kingdom of God and the ladies. Don't look for a husband. Don't look for a wife. And he'll add it. It'll work out better for you until death do your part. Because you're not going to be jealous. You're not going to be fighting. You're not going to be worried. You're not going to feel used and all that kind of stuff. You're not going to try to control him. And he won't try to control you. That ego stuff will not be happening. And I believe that's what you're talking about. So she loves you, Joel. Yeah, if you jump out of a plane together, there's yeah. that's something. You, if you can convince a man to jump out of a plane, he love you for sure. 
So you're doing fine. All right. So let me do this really fast. Anybody else? That's it. All right. I'm sorry? Yeah, I want to ask. You want to respond to that? Yeah, it's yeah, Okay. All right. It's amazing when you wake up. It's hard to come together in the wrong way, that's for sure. And you guys are blessed that you're not in that ego state where you're trying to control the man. That's a headache. Yes. I think it's uh, up the utmost importance to be dispassionate. And uh, why you say that? It, because the only way to truly love is by getting access to love through God. And when you're trusting God with your decisions, then you have a new discernment as to what to do in certain situations, and you'll know the right thing to do. And the right thing to do isn't necessarily to fawn over somebody yeah. relationship-wise or be, if they're going through a problem. Because even if they're going through a very bad problem, then you can look at this thing logically and say, well, what is your next plan of attack and help them approach their issue easily. Even are if you, you say, hey, I cannot help you. Uh, huh? Are you a compassionate person or dispassionate? I am extremely passionate about my art, and I am very feminine in that way because of my talents and skills. Right. But the more compassionate I was with the scene of artists and musicians, the more I shot myself in the foot and ruined any opportunity of things uh, having real fruition. And the more that I am dispassionate, the more I have actually uh, exponentiated my growth. As you an would be a better artist if you were not passionate. Mm -hmm. True. And uh, if you overcome, you stop smoking the pot and stuff like that, then you become dispassionate. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you need to put down that joint. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> so you can face everything. That's mm -hmm. why I'm telling you that. Yeah, yeah. All right. And, and have a higher level of consciousness, and that's where you can well, really I had about. I had felt very, uh, well, let's just say this very, fast forwarding through it, but I, when I was completely sober, I made very good friends uh, with people on hard drugs that were uppers. So I was very naturally like a kind of cracked out person just completely being sober. And when I started smoking pot, I was able to actually calm down my reactions. And the more I'm smoking pot, the more like I am unable to control my reactions sober. So now when I'm right. becoming sober, I have, a, I think it was good for me to have started smoking pot at some point, but now it's easier for me to say, oh wait, I still need to lower down my reaction time in my sober mind. Have you gone and forgiven your mother? I actually have. It's been a two-year process. Oh, yeah. And it's been really rough, and my family kind of fell apart around the time I did. Yeah. And I thought uh, it was kind of a big disappointment that my family, my parents kind of separated and everything around the time that I forgave both of them. Right. But actually, uh, it's been a major growth, and I've been able to connect with them way better than I ever had. Right on. Before. Right on, man. You doing a silent prayer, too? No, no, I have not. I so actually, far. I've watched it before, I, but I'm actually I, really pretty confident in my prayer and meditation abilities. Do the, do the silent prayer. You'll see the right way to go. Do both until you see which one you like. Okay? So I got to do this. Um, I'll say it this way, just so you know. I, um, at one time, I was a very passionate person and compassionate person, a very emotional person, right? And I knew something was wrong with being that way because it doesn't feel right as a man, particularly as a man, to be that way. And you do end up making all the wrong decisions. You feel sorry for people when you shouldn't be feeling sorry for them. Your kids take advantage of you because they can make you feel a certain way. They know how to play you and get what you want and make you feel sorry for them or, or feel emotional to them, you know. And you find yourself doing the wrong things for them. I remember when my son was a little kid, and I was so emotional, he lived with me. He used to take advantage of me. Just, I'm like, oh, you're so cute. Yeah, you can go. <laughs> you can go. You can have it. And he got to the point where he just knew how to play me. But I was emotional connection to him, and I couldn't, couldn't really say no at all times or when I needed to say no. And so he learned how to just play me, and he always ended up getting what he done, wanted one way or another, right? And so I've been always emotional. Uh, but then out of nowhere I realized that I'm not that way anymore. 
You know, and I know it's because, as I've said over and over again, once you were born again, he started to renew your mind, right? You're being changed in the spirit in the same way, uh, and you're growing in the same way that a child grows in the physical. And I, was, I realized, why wow, I don't really feel anything about it. And like, uh, I think Victoria was saying, when someone said, my, my uncle died, you have to make yourself say, oh, what do you say? What do you, what do you say? Yeah, sorry for your loss, right? And, and Satan be trying to make you say it. Sorry for your loss. Sorry for your loss. And, but now I know I don't have to say that, you know. I don't have to say it because I didn't know the person. I really don't feel anything. I remember thinking as a kid when I hear people say, well, John Doe died down the road, right? And the people go, oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. And I used to say, why are you so sorry? You don't even know the person. You know, it's amazing that in that father state like that, you just lie about everything. You really don't feel anything about it. Like some of these people I know now in the world out there, if they die, I could care less. I really couldn't, but the world going to go, oh, I feel your compassion, right? But children of God are going to overcome compassion because that's a worldly thing. It's a female thing in a father state. It really is. And it does no one any good. You will, I don't want you to make yourself become dispassionate. You will become that way because you're being renewed. That's why God said that we have to be born again and he will renew our mind. And I realized he said something like uh, faith is like a little mustard seed. It's like small and it'll grow into something big, right? So the fact that you guys and ladies realize I'm wrong for judging. I need to go and forgive, and when you forgave, you're showing faith in God, and you're learning not to believe the lie from Satan, because when you don't believe any thoughts at all, you let them pass, you have faith. That's all left is faith in God. You either believe in Satan, or you believe it's in God, right, in here. And so when you stay out of your thoughts, you are believing in God, and amazing things are happening. And he's renewing you in a way that when you'll be in the world, but not of it. And, you know, Will, I, I really like Will, he's a nice guy. But all those scriptures you quote, that's not it. It's just intellectual knowledge. You know, it doesn't mean anything because it's, you just know, you have the knowledge of good and evil. But you don't really know God, you just know about him. That's why you ask, well, how do you know you believe in God? Because I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. How would you do that? Well, I did this and did that. It's not the way it is. And God... Anyone cannot get into the kingdom. Only God can draw you in the kingdom, and he knows your heart, right? And he's not going to let Satan's children in the kingdom, and the kingdom is inside of us. He's not, not up here, but in here. He's not going to let you in. you got to overcome Satan. And then you'll find yourself, you'll realize one day, wow, that's why I'm able to ask some people questions on the radio and on TV and when I talk to them in the world out there, because I'm not really feeling anything about it. I'm not trying not to feel anything, but I'm not feeling anything. Whereas before, I would have been feeling something. And I thought that was the natural way. That's the wrong way. All right? And the world got you, oh, I'm just so passionate. What is your passion? I used to uh, hear Oprah saying that to the people she interviewed. What is your passion? You don't want to be that way. You're better off being dispassionate. But don't make yourself become that way. And whatever talent you have, whatever your job is, you'll be much better at it than you would if you were a passionate person. And you would never be let down. You know, if someone don't like your project, it's fine. But if you're a passionate person and they don't like your project, you're going down there with them. <laughs> you know what I mean? But if they uh, like it, you're still even key. Your ego is not built up, but you're grateful that they like it. And you're not disappointed if they don't like it. And so when you are a dispassionate person and you are becoming that way, when you have to help someone, you're going to be totally honest with them. Because as one of you guys said, it, it's pure love. And there is no feeling with it. And it just is. You know, it just is. And you're going to be. You'll just be represented. And God is working through you and you'll represent love. And you'll be able to be honest with one another 
And if the person get mad, it won't be a big deal. And if they, you're gonna, and if they are mad, I mean, if they don't get mad, no big deal. If they get mad, no big deal, because you realize what's driving them. You just see what's driving them. So you're very fortunate to be waking up. The world way is the wrong way. It really is. It's a fallen state way. And it's feminine in nature, but yet not. I do want to say that spirit that is destroying everything through the women, that's Satan's spirit. That's why the woman can overcome it. She needs her earthly father or her husband, or she needs to start seeking for herself to overcome Satan's spirit. That's what's working through her to destroy. So you can't overcome it. As some of you ladies are saying, you're overcoming it. But it's a spirit. And you will become dispassionate, but it's nothing like what you think that it is. You really can't look on Google and find a definition for this. It's not in the dictionary, because the definition in the dictionary is made by, is put there by a fallen state person, whether it's a preacher or non-Christian or whatever, right? They put it there based on how they feel. And, and in closing, I realize that Christianity is based on how people feel. They read the scriptures, and the scripture says, you should be this way or be that way or don't do this. And now they're trying to act it out because their mind tells them that this is what the Bible said, so now i got to act that way. For an example, the Bible says you must be born again, right? And it says, accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, right? But the Christians think that it means, okay, I read it, I heard it, and I believe it, now I'm saved. And, and, and yet they're sinning, they are lying, they are cheating, they are unhappy, they are depressed, they are jealous, they are envious, they have worries, they are sleeping together. They don't ever overcome that because they have just interpreted what Satan did, what they think it means. And then if you don't act like they think you should act because they have built this Christian world, they always say you are not a Christian. If you're a person that don't sin, or if you're a person that's honest, or if you're not all into your emotions, they'll say, oh, you're not a Christian. Especially if you say you don't sin. That is the greatest deceit I ever heard that the devil can put on somebody. That you could believe, that you could be a son or a daughter of God and still sin. It looks like you have to be on pot to, to believe that. <laughs> it's like you have to smoke the, the whole store down the road. You know what I'm saying? Why would you, how would you even believe that? You could be born again of God and still sin. It just doesn't make sense, but Satan have convinced them of that. It's like you were saying, well, you could be like Jesus, but you can't be like Jesus. Jesus came to be an example so that we can be like him. He sacrificed so we can be like him. He, once we're born again, he is our brother. And like the brother, God is our father, right? So you're going to be like the brother, a perfect love. No fear, no doubt, no worry. And when he said to the, uh, the guys, throw the first stone, he that throw the first stone, he that without sin, let him, he was just reminding them, y'all don't have any right to judge this woman because y'all are sinners too. So how are you going to judge that person, right? That's all that was about. It wasn't about compassion and all that crap that the liberals are trying to tell you. Jesus was a dispassionate person. He was not a passionate person at all. Passion is of the world. And you'll see it for yourself. So let's let it go in one ear and out the other. And just watch. And when you see passionate people, you can say, beta, beta female. And there you get the message. <laughs> Whenever I'm riding down the road, yesterday I was riding down the road, I saw a couple cars, the men were sitting in the woman's seat, and the woman was driving. I found myself there yelling out, beta. <laughs> it just looked beta. Beta. The little woman driving and the guy sitting all in the car. I thought one of them hurt me because this car stopped at the same time, and I looked over and I said, beta. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, relax. You're growing in the spirit. And you can't do anything about it. He's doing it for you. If he wasn't doing it, you wouldn't be able to see, you would not be able to see what you see. All right? That makes sense? You don't want to be compassionate. Don't ever let Oprah tell you to be compassionate. And men, don't ever use that word again. I hear a lot of men talking about, oh, I'm passionate. I'm like, what the? So do the silent prayer. 
Speak up, don't resent, and it's working itself out. You're being renewed. You're being changed. You're, everything is changing for the good. All right? Dispassionate is the way to go. But don't make yourself be like that because you become cold. If you try to make yourself be dispassionate, you're going to seem mean and cold, and you're going to turn people off that way too. So don't try to learn to be dispassionate. You hear that, Nick? <laughs> I changed my answer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and the last thing, real fast, about going both ways, you can't be both. You're either passionate or, I mean, compassionate or dispassionate. You can't ride two horses. You can't serve Satan and God. You can only serve one master. Uh, that's, me, I, that's why I asked about going both ways. Be, because I thought that would be a hint for you that you can't be both. Compassion is of the world, which is of Satan. Dispassion is of God. You can't go in and out of it. That makes sense? Yes, sir. Real fast. Okay. Uh, when Jesus uh, approached Lazarus to revive him. Uh, oh, hold on for the mic. Oh, sorry. Okay. Jesus wept uh, when, when, he, uh, when, when he approached Lazarus. Now, I'm not saying that he wept because Lazarus died. Clearly, he was, he was above that. Well, how do you explain that? I heard it once that, that he, he, he wept for the ignorance of people and, and what death is. So, what well, the Bible says that Jesus, Jesus when, when he came to Lazarus, said that he had loved him. People thought that he was weeping because he loved him so much. What was that? He started crying? He, well, he wept. The Bible says he wept. Does it mean he cried? No. It's just that he wept. Oh, so what's your question? So what, what that, that's clearly a feeling, right? I don't know. I mean, I see people suffering because they cannot see. I know for a fact right. that they're suffering because they cannot see because once you wake up, as you can see, your suffering starts to go away. That doesn't mean you don't have challenges. People do crazy things. You have to overcome them. But personally, inwardly, you're not suffering. And it's just, it's really, you like you feel for them, but not like the feeling you think because you know if they would just get to know themselves and wake up, they wouldn't have to go through all that stuff. Right. Well, no, no, I know. I, I, it's not the feeling so that Jesus think. felt for them because they could not see. Right. But see, well, the thing about language, compassion, though, I know what the problem is. The okay. thing about language, when you hear the word wept, you're going to automatically think of crying and boo yeah, no, or that. he felt for them, right? Right. But you can see a situation and, and, and want it right without feeling for it. Right. A lot of people think you got to put yourself in their shoes to, to I, I can't find the right word for you, but it's not like uh -huh. a human emotion. Right, and I, I agree. I just thought that maybe this is a true compassion. It's not a little bit of what Chris was saying um, in that being dispassionate, you are compassionate. And it's no, not a feeling. It's not a basic. You can't be both compassion and clearly of Satan. Compassion? Compassion, yes. Okay. Okay. Because even when we pray for someone, who are sick, the little babies in the hospital. You ask God to let his will be done for them because you don't know their, their hearts, you don't know their family, you don't know their parents. And you might pray that they get healed and then they give up, they get up and start giving you AIDS. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but only God knows the will, so you just pray, you know what? God, let your will be done for this little child. You know what I'm saying? Because we don't know the heart of man. And the heart is wicked. So we don't know. We just don't know. And, but we've been taught to pray, oh, Lord, heal this baby. All in the name, come out of him, Satan. <laughs> Satan, you got it. And, and Satan come out and like, oh, praise the Lord. And then Satan go back in <laughs> <laughs> and destroy the preacher. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We, of ourselves, we know nothing. And of ourselves, we can do nothing. But once you're born again, it, all things will be revealed as needed. All right, so just relax. That makes sense? Yeah. Okay. All right. Did that help a little bit? So don't try to make yourself be compassionate. I mean, dispassionate, yeah. You're already compassionate, some. But don't try to make yourself because that's false. We can't, it's a spirit, right? And we can't make our, it's enough to see that we are compassionate or not, but don't try to make it be. All right, just relax, really. Let go and let God. You heard that before, right? Yeah. Let go and let God. So let me make any other questions about that?
Yes, sir, real fast. Um, oh, Doug told me I was going to be doing this. Every time I say we're going to end, I always ask, do you have a question? Yes, sir. Really fast. Um, just as so you touched the uh, example with the, with the baby, right, or young children. Right. Uh, I think it was last week also someone uh, mentioned that, or it was a super chat or something. Um, someone asked, like, like, if God exists, why... Uh, like why does baby dies, right? And like, I kind of like agree. Like you, you, I can tell. Like, um, you look at the person, baby innocent, you know, and suddenly like suffering happens. It's like something hard as a death happens. Um, Real fast. The question is like, how's a how's a um, how's a God relates to that? How's a like love of God is expressed in it? Um, again, you're, it's you're be, like, because back it's to the sins of the fathers. The sins of the parents passed down to the children. That's why they're dying. Okay, um, That's why parents have to be perfect. And you can be perfect, by the way. You mean perfect by overcoming rather than giving into it. All right? So. Um, well, just as a, as a thought, like, would be, if, let's say, if God, like, a love of God, right? God loves that child, or would he, like, Make the the good way happen for for the child. Would he make what now? The like, would God heal that child? Let's say it that way, or make it like everything work out good for it's that the child. It's the sins of the parents that killing the children. It really yeah. is. That's why you're supposed to be perfect, so that your kids are not spiritually traumatized. The kids are messed up because the parents are messed up, and when you're in that father state, you're open to diseases and all kind of cruel things happening to you. But it's the parents. It's like, it's but God can do what he wants, of course. If he wanted to heal the child, he can do what he wants, but the parent won't learn a lesson if that happened. You know what I'm saying? Because God is a dispassionate God. Yeah, right. That's dispassionate love. I think I want to like hear, hear, love. hear more from the perspective of God because I, like, I understand people like praying and doing all the stuff. Like you give example right now. But right now it's, it's some, something like we, let's say myself, we try like by doing that, like control God, and when that doesn't happen, it's kind of like disappointing. Yeah. Would you agree on that? Uh, so I don't know what he's saying because he's speaking foreign. <laughs> I'm saying like uh, when people Speak try Spanish to and then Nick can interpret it <laughs> real fast. Oh, okay, I got. It. Are you Spanish? Uh, no. You're not. What are you? Myself. Uh -huh. uh, half Russian, half Armenian. Oh. Do we have any Russians in here? Russians, no. But I got to end. We'll deal with that later because sure. I, I really just got it. Sure. But it sounds like an interesting statement or question. Uh, thank you. So don't forget it. So let me do this real fast. So the update for the building fund. All right. So there was a um, challenge grant, right, of 60000 A guy called up and said, you know what, man? You have helped me and my family. So we were, we were raising 300000 so there was a challenge grant of 60000 and we need to have it by the 15th or the 17th, something like that, today, I believe. And uh, another guy called up this morning and said that he would meet the challenge grant. So the challenge grant of 60000 was met today. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Amazing. But that ain't all. <laughs> nope, that ain't all. And so the same guy asked, well, how close are you to making the 300000 And I think, oh, so we needed 4475 for the matching grant. And he, so he gave us that. And then he asked, well, how much, how close are you to the 300000 We needed 11566 for that to make the total 300000 so he's like, oh, okay, I'll match that today too. So he did that as well. So we made the 300,000 today. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Yeah. And I have to say that I'm so grateful. I really am. And uh, there's a couple of buildings I'm looking at right now in this area. And um, I'm going to make an offer on it. And we'll let you guys know, ladies, we'll let you know about it. I want to stay in this area because I ain't going to the hood. Uh oh, 
And so I, I, I may switch realtors. I'm working with a guy now who kind of beta like, you know, like aggressive. And I told him, I'm like, I'd rather have a woman working for me if, if I'm going to work with a woman, man. You know, be aggressive, right? And so I may switch realtor if he doesn't get more aggressive. But we have the money. That doesn't mean, so you still can donate, folks. So we, you got to move and all that. A lot of people volunteer to help us, too. So do the move mark and other movers that have trust and things like that. So it's just a matter now of me bidding on a building and uh, making that move. Uh, we're supposed to be out at the end of this month. And I know this month is going by really fast. So I'm hiding from the owner. I'm like, tell him I'm not here. I'll call him back. No. But I don't know what's happening with that at this point. We haven't heard from them yet. Uh, so, but we're working on it so we can try to get out of here. All right? So that's where we are right now with the, with the uh, building fund. We made the 300000 plus the 60000 match. So thank all of you out there and all of you here. You guys really stood up for me. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so we are having a women's meeting this Thursday. What else, Hermes? That's it. That's it. So ladies, y'all better show up. All right. Yes. You can have volunteering for moving when you do this. Yes. Cool. Absolutely. Cool. Yeah. We'll let all. And if you're interested in helping us, make sure on the, <laughs> online you can sign up. Is that right, Hermes? Yeah. Yeah. You can sign up so we can make a quick move. Also, if you know anything about construction, let me know too. Because I want you to, if you're really good and you like us, I want you to take a look at the building that I may pick so you let me know if we can widen it or what we could, can and cannot do with it if you're into construction. All right? Anybody out there, let us know. All right. So thank you all. Do the silent prayer. Be cool. Everything will work out. All right? Don't forget to donate to nonprofit. And uh, we have merch and all kind of stuff. But do the silent prayer. And doubt every thought about everything. And if you practice doing that, you're going to find that you believe in God and all things are possible. Healing, whatever your needs are, they will be met. But you got to doubt the lie. All right? And one last thing. Um, if someone tells you the truth about yourself and you get mad, don't blame the person. Just be grateful that they told you. All right? But if they tell you the truth about yourself and it's not true, let that pass too. Be grateful that they said it. It gave you a chance to look at yourself. God is always trying to help us. So situations causes us to look at ourselves. Don't take it personal because that person had nothing to do with the way you are. All right? You must forgive so that God can forgive you and you'll be fine. All right? Keep it simple. Just keep it simple. It works out. Thank you all very much. I appreciate it. Everybody. So what we